Good to have you with us on this Monday edition, Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Lots of news out there. I'm sure you're aware of what unfolded with the Clinton campaign over the weekend. The former secretary is at her home in New York. She's resting nicely and recovering from pneumonia. Uh, folks, have you ever had pneumonia? You probably have and you didn't even know it. Uh, it's obviously something that's being treated with antibiotics. It wouldn't surprise me if Hillary Clinton's even taken some steroids. The campaign says that we're going to get more medical information later this week. All of that aside, let's go back to the comment that I agree with. That half of the Trump supporters out there are a basket of deplorables. I don't know if uh, there's any Clinton backer out there who could have said it any better. They left it for the candidate. This was said on Friday. Uh, Hillary Clinton was giving a speech and she obviously went off script. And now she's taken, of course, a lot of heat and she's walked it back saying that she shouldn't have said half of them. But wait a minute. The bottom line here is, is that she's correct. And she labeled the racist, the xenophobia, all this. So listen to this. We are living in a volatile political environment. You know, to just be grossly generalistic, you could put half of Trump supporters into what I call the basket of deplorables. <laughs> listen to the crowd. Right? The racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic islamophobic you name it and unfortunately there are people like that and he has lifted them up you have to admit that's the truth now whether it's half that could be debated and i'm proud that secretary clinton didn't walk that back because there are deplorable people out there who think that donald trump should be president of the united states and you know what it's always the conservatives and the right wing that are so worried about people being offended why would they be offended by a true definition of what they support? Now, I'm sure that there's some good people out there that support Trump, but Clinton is spot on here. And I think this shows an element of guts on her part to stick to her guns. Yeah, probably not half of them. Who knows? Maybe 75%. <laughs> you know, now that's a, a, a comment that Hillary made that, uh, that I agree with. I do. Here's what I don't agree with, that she is going to be the candidate that can work with Republicans. Are, are we losing our focus here? If Hillary Clinton is president of the United States, is she going to work with Paul Ryan? What does Paul Ryan want to do that Hillary Clinton wants to do? We got to get out of this mindset that there's going to be this big coming together of Republicans and Democrats in Washington once we get a new president. The Republicans are who they are, and a lot of them are supporting Trump, and a lot of them are in the neighborhood of what she described as supporters of Trump. They are for the privatization. How many times do they have to vote down health care before you get serious about it, folks? Come on. They uh, want to privatize Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. They want more tax cuts for the wealthy. They want to deregulate Wall Street. Nothing has changed. This is one of the reasons why none of those other 16 candidates or 17 candidates up there out of the Republican establishment were able to do anything. It's taken an outsider like Trump to gin up the people she's talking about to get him to win. And that's where it is. This is uh, Trump's reaction today in Baltimore. I was thus deeply shocked and alarmed this Friday to hear my opponent attack, slander, smear, demean these wonderful, amazing people who are supporting our campaign by the millions. Our support comes from every part of America and every walk of life. I don't believe that for a heartbeat. Uh, Trump goes on to say that he thinks that Clinton's got disdain for people. The disdain that Hillary Clinton expressed toward millions of decent Americans disqualifies her from public service. You cannot run for president if you have such contempt in your heart for the American voter. And, Clinton, and uh, Trump went on to say that this was uh, her basically her Mitt Romney moment, her 47 percent moment, that this is the biggest mistake on the campaign uh, during the campaign season. I, I don't agree with that at all. 
I think the biggest mistake Hillary Clinton has made so far is not allowing her team to release the fact right away that she has pneumonia. And we can all wonder if that videotape had not surfaced on Sunday at that memorial at 9-11. Uh, I, I don't know if this story would ever come out. Now, the Clinton, the Clinton campaign this afternoon is saying, oh, we were going to release more information. We were going to do it. They should have done it on time, and they didn't. You know, the fact is they didn't. The fact is John Podesta, who used to head up the Center for American Progress, who will not allow anybody from that organization on RT America or on my program for whatever reason, I guess I'm toxic, he ought to know better. You know, he, he's been around politics a long time. So it's not just Hillary Clinton that is slow with the truth. It's the people who are around her. I can't believe that she can go this far in the campaign and not come out with a clear judgment that full disclosure is the only way to go. You know, maybe the Republicans and Democrats can get together and do this. Pass a freaking law that will force anybody who wants to run for president to release their health records and their taxes, and we won't have all of this bullshit. You know, I mean, this has like been the biggest story. We're off the issues of what the what they really want to do to run the country because we're worried about somebody's taxes or somebody's health report. We could all put this out of the way. I mean, certainly they don't care how much money is in the campaign. Hell, they're all for Citizens United. Well, what about uniting the country when it comes to those two issues? You got to release your tax returns. You got to be forthcoming with your help if you want health. If you want to be president of the United States. All right, we'll unpack this situation with Hillary Clinton with Ruth Conniff when we come back. Stay with us. Hey, folks, you've heard me talk about BioGreen Clean. I'm going to show you right now on my airplane just how tough this is. I want you to keep in mind chemical free, 100% plant derived, biodegradable. It is the safest cleaner that you can get, and it's the most effective. Go to our website, wegotahead.com, or go to biogreenclean.com www.b-i-o-g-r-e-e-n-c-l-e-a-n and order today. It's time to continue our conversation about mechanical insulation. Mechanical insulation is for the piping systems in our nation's commercial and industrial facilities. Facility owners are burning up billions of dollars through the lack of mechanical insulation on these piping systems. Call the iSave team. Insulation saves America valuable energy, and this team of energy conservation specialists is shovel-ready to save you money. Visit iSaveTeam.org to have a specialist give your plant an energy audit. We perpetuate a culture of crime all the way from Wall Street right down to the Main Street in our hometowns. It's worse than it has been since FDR took control of the problem and said we can't count on industry taking care of the American labor. They probably have already engaged in some type of criminal cover-up. And the law prohibits the government from even doing anything about it. Catch America's lawyer Mike Papantonio on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV. Good to have you with us, Ed Schultz, News and Commentary. Dr. Bear is going to join us tonight to talk about pneumonia. Hillary Clinton on antibiotics. She's resting, recovering nicely, according to her doctor. And they're going to be releasing more uh, health information later on this week. And Brian Fallon was saying on the cables today that he thinks she'll be back on the campaign trail uh, before the week is out. Now... Here, here's where I think they're going to run into a problem. There's three issues here. There's Clinton's health, there's the campaign, and then there's transparency. I hope Hillary doesn't jump on the campaign trail too soon and then have a relapse because that's very, very possible. If that were to happen, that wouldn't be good. But I think people understand that, you know, people getting sick and having some time to, to get back together. It's a grueling campaign. I don't know, maybe this will be a wake-up call to America that maybe we would shorten this campaign season like some other countries do the fact is that'll never happen because the mainstream media loves all the money that's being spent it's a profit center for them all right i, I want to get the unvarnished opinion top to bottom a to z from ruth conniff who is a, a, a fabulous uh, journalist editor of the progressive magazine in madison ruth good to have you with us yeah great to talk to you you're you, where, where do you tell me a to z what what's happening with hillary clinton well, you know, she's sick, and you can hardly be amazed by that. I mean, it is a grueling 
uh, campaign. As you point out, it goes on into eternity now in, in our electoral system. And she has not been as forthcoming about her medical records, nor has Trump, as, as previous presidential candidates have. So, you know, I think what happened is a confluence of events. She pushed herself really hard and got pneumonia. I've had walking pneumonia when I was pushing myself really hard, so I, I can completely imagine what's happening with her health. And it fed right into this right-wing media narrative, which is that we should all be worried that somehow she's got brain cancer or something. You know, there's been this strange rumor mill, completely unsubstantiated on the right. And so, unfortunately, her kind of collapse at this 9-11 ceremony fed right into that narrative. But the two things are not actually related, and one doesn't prove the other. Here's what I don't understand, Ruth. She was diagnosed by the doctor on Friday. If she had had full disclosure, there's no way she could have gotten out of uh, going to the 9-11 uh, uh, ceremony. I mean, you, you just have to do that no matter how sick you are. People would have respected that. I, I, they just misplayed this all the way around. I, I, I can't believe such experienced handlers and, and people of campaign knowledge would not understand that maybe disclosing to the American people is kind of an important thing because now the question comes up, Ruth, is this the way she's going to run her administration if she's elected? What about that? Well, I think that's right. I think that there is a pattern with Hillary Clinton of holding on to information very, very tightly and being very cautious about disclosing things that could be damaging and even things that turn out not to be damaging, but then the non-disclosure is a problem. And that's what happened with the email story. Uh, it's what's happened with a lot of details back during the first Clinton administration with the health care plan. There's just a you know, she has an impulse to hold information very tightly and to be very reluctant uh, to be open about it. I mean, she's now letting reporters on her plane. Both Trump and Hillary have been really reluctant to do that. So I think that that is harmful. I think that hesitation to disclose creates an impression of secrecy, and that creates a feeling of distrust. This question came up uh, yesterday on RT. Uh, and, and it surfaced today on, on CNN. This is Brian Fallon visiting with Blitzer. Tim Brian, if we would have never seen that video, would you have told the American public that she had pneumonia? I think that, Wolf, uh, the video was uh, not necessary to providing that information because, uh, as it was, she left the event early. We were already being pressed to explain uh, why she left early, and uh, it took us a bit to get that information together to release a statement. Uh, and in retrospect, I think we, we should have provided more information more quickly. But yes, I think regardless of whether the video surfaced or not, in the aftermath of that event yesterday, I think we would have made the same decision to uh, have her rest these next couple days and to disclose that she had been diagnosed with the pneumonia on Friday. But they did not do it on Friday when they could have. There didn't seem to be a sense of urgency to get it out there, Ruth. Your thoughts? I really don't think that they would have told anybody if they didn't have to. You know, I think that it's just the fact is that given the level of uh, conspiracy theory out there about her health, it was better to tell the truth and say, look, she's got pneumonia. A lot of people have had pneumonia uh, than, than let, people, you know, let that swirl and let people wonder what was going on. So, you know, this is, this is an issue. She's got to recover. She's got to get better. She pushes herself really hard. Remember George W. Bush used to take his pillow along on the campaign trail, <laughs> go home a lot, and there was really kind of an impression there that he wasn't exactly pushing the pedal to the metal. Yeah. I mean, Hillary's the opposite. She is, she works, she's such a, a hard worker, and the press who've traveled with her are sort of awed by it. And I think, you know, her staff are going to have to keep her from overdoing it. Does this change anything? I think this is a one-day, two-day, three-day story. I think, you know, there's two stories out there right now. One is this health thing, which I think is, in fact, not a huge deal unless there's other health stuff that we don't know about, and we don't have any reason to believe that. Uh, and I think that, the you know, the other story about her condemning Trump supporters, uh, you know, that's, that's another problem <laughs> that she's got this week. But I don't think either of these is sort of, you know, October surprise territory. David Schuster, journalist, tweeted out today saying that the... Uh He's been told that the DNC, if uh, Hillary weren't to step out of this race, that the DNC would go to Joe Biden and the Sanders campaign is scrambling. Now, that's just a tweet from a journalist. I have respect for David Schuster. He's an award winner. 
uh, if we want to go down that road for just a moment, I mean, wouldn't it be Bernie Sanders? I mean, wouldn't the Sanders supporters go absolutely nuts if Hillary were not be able to be able to run and then Biden steps in after Sanders had raised all that money, got all those super delegates? Well, I think that the Bernie Sanders supporters would be very disappointed if it weren't Sanders. But having been to the Democratic convention and watching the DNC handling of the Bernie Sanders delegates there, I'm willing to lay money that uh, the party is not going to Bernie Sanders. You know, I mean, I, I, I think that's so speculative. I mean, you know, the woman has a cough. <laughs> <laughs> let's, not, let's not get carried away here. I don't think we're looking for another candidate. Yeah, okay. Um, the superdelegates, what's your impression of their support for Hillary? Are, are they out there enough? Are, they, are, are, the, are the people that, that were on board with Hillary early on, I know Obama's been out a little bit, Biden's been out a little bit, Bernie's been out, I think, once uh, that I saw anyway, maybe more. What role do the superdelegates play here inside 60 days? Well, I think surrogates are really important because the candidate can't be everywhere. And I think you have sort of a, a varied group of Hillary Clinton enthusiasts. I think, um, I think there are a lot of women who are very enthusiastic about the historic nature of the campaign. I think there are a lot of um, people for whom reproductive rights are a top issue who are very energized and enthusiastic for Hillary Clinton. Um, and, you know, party people, long time inside Democratic Party people. Uh, and then you've got, you know, the younger activists. Uh, you have people who were Sanders supporters who who now are supporting Hillary because they're, you know, they're on the team, like Keith Ellison and, you know, other progressives in Congress. And, you know, I, I think you can see by the poll numbers the erosion of her lead over Trump, which is so alarming that there's a little bit of an enthusiasm problem. Yeah, and no question. that's hard to overcome, yeah. even with a lot of really hard work. So it's a big lift, and I think people who are truly scared of a possible Trump administration are getting out there to do the work. And that's, you know, I think pretty much understood among among the folks who are on the team that that's what they have to do. And then you've got Bernie people who are really divided. They're, I think, for the most part, going to vote for Hillary, the people who supported Sanders, you know, by at least 80%. And then you got some Jill Stein people, and you got some people who are just turned off. And that's because Bernie Sanders ran a campaign critiquing the sort of business as usual Democratic Party, and it's hard for folks who are really, really energized by that to now get behind the business as usual Democratic Party. It's not a surprise. Good take. Good to have you with us, Ruth Connor. Thanks so much. Yeah, nice to talk to you. You bet. Editor of Progressive Magazine here on Ed Schultz News and Commentary. We're back tomorrow.